While we're waiting, um, I have a lat question, which I know isn't our topic today, but um, when last week we were talking about back stuff, this question came up for me because the lats are kind of feed into the back. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times I, I, I get sort of a being a dysfunctional back person, engaging the lats sometimes puts me in that place of dysfunction. And I wonder if that's something that you see often or if, and, and if so, how you get around that to get healthy lat engagement. Yeah, that's a really good question. The, lat, the lats have, a, I think, play a huge part in the stability just because they are coming, the stability of the shoulder, the stability of the back because of their span, right? So anterior shoulder, underarm, back, and pelvic uh, crest, right? The posterior pelvic crest there. So um, they have that, that's why when we use the lats to help us, they help us shorten and move into an upper ab curl, for example, or they can actually create some stability um, from upper to lower because of the lats being there uh, and being active. I, they can also overdo it and really, so if you can pull really hard with your lat, you can create a, maybe you don't see it from the side, but um, maybe if I pull really hard, I can actually create a side bend. And so, and then the other interesting thing is the direction of the fibers, right, are diagonal. They're not straight fibers. So we're not talking about straight fibers going down your back. We're talking about fibers that are coming diagonal. Uh, which you know we used to call it in the circus your wingspan, right? That that those muscles that kind of go out in that diagonal. So all that to say, can they um, play into back dysfunction? Absolutely. Uh, do I see it happen? I see it happen in. I see bad patterning happening a lot, and I see the lots used wrong a lot. Whether it's going upward, not not firing, or pulling the shoulders forward instead of wrapping back and into the lats because of their anterior um, or sort of anterior attachment here in the shoulder, right? So they can end up doing that to the shoulders. And likewise in the back, they can, if you over pull, I think you will actually end up causing a problem. Um, so I'm guessing that somehow it's too much, maybe too much pull. Um, and then, then there's the sort of that diagonal factor again. So a lot of times I think it might not even be the same sided lat. It might be the opposite side that can cause a dysfunction in the lumbar on the opposite side. Mm-hmm. Not, not that the lat actually crosses, the fascia connects all there in the middle. So the lat itself muscularly doesn't even go all the way down, but the fascia does. And then the fascia is so interconnected that I think sometimes we get that diagonal so this what I would look for is no over contraction I would look for the diagonal pattern what is the opposite hip pelvis doing um, and then where is the shoulder in space I don't I don't think this is so much the issue when it's back dysfunction usually it's usually something about over pulling or side bending or the diagonal side opposite side cool thank you all right, well, we'll start. So welcome, everybody. Thank you guys so much for meeting me for Foot Day. Yay, Foot Day. I'm so excited for Feet Days. I, um, I was hoping to be the last one today just to try to try and wrap things up a little bit because I, I could talk about feet until three weeks from now and really bore you. So I thought what I'd love to do is fill in the gaps and let you guys uh, start out and um, – I mean, I could start us out with a little foot warm up, but I thought I wanted to see what you guys had, and then I would love to fill in after you on what I would add or um, put in there as well. Would that be okay? Yeah? Is anybody brave enough? I'm going to pick on you, Genevieve, because I know you're my, my foot friend over there. Um, would anybody other than Genevieve like to go first? All right. So I'm going to throw you, I'm gonna throw you to the wolves, Genevieve. Okay. There's a lot of (laughs) exercises that I like to do for feet. Um, A lot of them have to do with the TheraBand. What we can do is take the TheraBand and start supine. Uh, You can also do the seated, but I think supine is kind of nice. 
And so what you can do is just put the band right over the foot, ball of the foot. Try and get the toes in there also. Um, and then I kind of like starting with this ankle stabilization that we usually get with the reformer. So aiming your ball of your foot, base of your toes straight forward, and then holding that position as you lengthen the leg out and stabilize through the ankle as it comes back in. So if somebody is weak in the ankle, they may pop into that extended position and try and hold that or be stuck in a flex position. <clears throat> so this one's nice for ankle stabilization. And then from there, you can take uh, just a, the points and flex through the TheraBand. So holding the ankle again stable and then really working through an elongated ankle and then also incorporating the toes. So trying to get a toe spread and then point and then pull the toes back and then flex. <clears throat> so I like to really encourage that toe spread, um, which not everybody I recognize has the, the um, ability to do, but I think even just thinking about it helps to um, encourage that uh, muscle development. Um, and then also I like to do just the toes. So keep the ankle long and just flex and point the toes. This is also a really nice way to um, talk about reaching through the leg. So you can get that energy line through the whole leg as you kind of reach into the band. And then from there, keep the toes flexed and the ankle long and then just draw some small circles with the foot. So this one, I really like for ankle control. Um, I think calf raises are also nice, but when we just do the straight up and down, um, I don't know, it, it, this, this little circle motion, I feel like really gets a lot of those intrinsic muscles, those stabilization muscles and you know, reverse the circle if you haven't already. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and switch sides. So starting with the ball of the foot pointing forward, just pressing and returning through the leg. And then lengthening out and holding, uh, flexing the foot, and then pointing all the way through the ankle and the toes, trying to spread the toes in that last motion. And then holding the ankle long, just the toes, point and flex. and then hold the toes flexed and do some ankle circles here. I should say another cue for this one is to try and make the circle symmetrical on all sides. So a lot of people have a lot of range going, you know, kind of sickled and toward the midline. Uh, and instead try to match that range that you have on the outer side, if that makes sense. Teresa, did you have one about feet that you wanted to share? No, but that was awesome, Genevieve. I felt that all in my booty and my hips. It was really nice. All right. Um, well, Genevieve, it's you and me. You and I are both foot fanatics, I think. Uh, do you want to do a couple more and then I'll take it from there? Or do you want me to go and we'll go back and forth? I'll do a couple more. Okay. Um, so this next one probably is usually better standing. I'll just so you can see me be here. But um, I like to do some drumming with the toes. This is a sim similar idea to that toe spread. Um, and you may, 
Might be a better uh, flow if you do this flex one first. So go ahead and flex the toes up. And in, in that toe flex, you're sort of pulling your uh, arch of your foot up, drawing the, the ball of your foot back toward your heels a little bit. Um, and so with that, working for the toe spread. And then from there, try to drum your toes like you're playing a piano. So starting with the pinky toe, trying to get that down. So this is just working toward toe dexterity, which I know, again, is something that not everybody has or is used to. <laughs> and then you can try, go, try to go the other direction, which is impossible for me, but I always like to try it because I think it's just good for me. <clears throat> um, and I find doing these um, with that toe spreading idea and just that dexterity idea kind of helps to guard against the, that like, um, bunion development a little bit. Cause you, you're spreading the toes in that opposite direction, as opposed to this crammed in thing that we, a lot of us wind up getting wearing shoes all day. Um, so let's try that on the other side. Flexing the toes back and then <clears throat> flattening them out again. So flexing the toes back, drawing the ball of the foot toward your heel and lifting the arch of the foot. I should say with this one, again, trying to get the full ball of your foot still on the floor so you're not lifting up the pinky toe, but you're really um, keeping sort of that triangle of your foot completely down on the floor. And then from there, going for your drumming, starting from the pinky toe, going out to the big toe and then reversing. As you can see, my monkey toes don't wanna to do it. <laughs> All right, and then just a, a, a stretch really is this last one. Um, good to do in a chair if that's how you prefer, but you stick your fingers in between your toes. And this is similar to if you have toe spacers at home, um, that's another good option, but I like this cause it just gives you a little like nice, good feedback. You can really feel the underside of the foot spread. <clears throat> um, and it opens it up a little bit so that you can give a little massage to the underside. Um, so it's a little more, uh, I guess, receptive to massage than if your foot is like normally not spread apart. Not making sense probably, but <laughs> that's how I feel anyway. Um, and then you can do some circling here and kind of moving the metatarsals around a little bit. So I like to just give a little, a little roll of the foot, of the toes. And then a little shake and you can pull them out and go to the other side. And really try and get the webbing of your fingers to connect with the webbing of your toes. And try to allow the underside of your foot to soften here as they're spreading everything apart. And then doing your circles, getting a little movement in those bones and in the muscles. And a little shake and pull. That's it. Great, thank you. I love those. Uh, I, well, I'm gonna piggyback right off of you. Um, I have a, a ton of foot exercises I love, so I'll just start with the ones that sort of piggyback right off Genevieve's and add on to the toe lifting and spreading. That one is one of my absolute favorites. So whether it's sitting down or standing up, I tell people to practice this wherever they go in the grocery store with their shoes on, with their shoes off. It's something you could do all the time, and I get such a lift in the arch of the foot from it. So I get the ball of the big toe down and the ball of the pinky toe down. They both need to stay down. And that's what you want to make sure that people aren't rolling outside foot on that. And then 
So, so the add-on, that's all what Genevieve said, but the add-on here is that I try to keep the arch lifted and lower the toes back down. So if I can, I do it much better on my left foot than my right foot. It's my stronger foot arch. So if you pick up those toes and you see that arch lift, you've got your um, ball of the big toe, ball of the pinky toe down, then keep them there as you lower, keep the arch lift as you lower the toes down, right? So then the goal for me is to be able to pick up the arch like that without having to lift the toes first. So ideally, you want to think about in the future, I'm going to go this way, show you my better foot, is that we want to be able to pull the ball of the toe and the heel together without having to lift the toes. So if I lift the toes, I can totally do that and it shortens the length of the arch. I want to try and do that by pulling the big toe towards the heel without like gripping the floor with my toes and lifting up. I'm just pulling the ball of the big toe back towards the heel. And that gives me that same activation in the arch. So that would be where we're working towards. So I can relax and then I can do it here. And you can see that the arch does pick up, not as much, but it does pick up and support. So it's that kind of pulling backwards feeling from ball of the big toe to the heel that would come after the toe lifting, after you're good at that. So that is a great exercise. And then um, the other one we love here is, um, and I had these little balls made especially for this, or I got these little balls just for this. But um, if you can find soft balls, those are the best, I think. If you don't have a soft ball, you could roll up a towel um, and use it. Or you could even do these exercises without the ball, but the ball just gives you a, a nicer feeling. These are the simple little toe squeezes exercises. And I love them with the ball because the ball spreads the toes, like Genevieve was talking about toe spreading. So if you have the little balls, the idea would be to put them under your toes first. If you don't, you can do this without anything, or you could just put a towel on the floor with you. Use your TheraBand if you want. Um, I'll give you guys a second to get situated. There you go. And then the idea, I've, I've got long monkey toes, so I like to wrap my toes right around. So the first one is really just about the toes more than anything else. And I'm gonna try and squeeze the little balls just with my toes and release and squeeze. And then I play a game with myself and I see if I can actually pick up the balls. My right foot did it for a second. So I really am working on that flexion of the toes, spreading the toes and flexion, right, if I'm trying to pick up the ball. And it's nearly impossible with a big ball to do that unless you have monkeys, monkey toes like me, you can get pretty close. But yeah, it's a lot of work. So the idea is that there are so many muscles in the bottom of the foot that we're now trying to activate them and get the bottom of the foot stronger. So that's one that I love doing, and it can really make you feel like you've worked your feet. And then I'm going to move the ball into the underneath the metatarsals here a little bit more, and then the, sort of the distal metatarsals. And then I'm going to, I do this one I call doming, right? Same idea, only now I'm trying to grab the ball with the whole across of my foot, right? So I'm trying to get the ball under my foot and grab it. So the, if you look at the tops of your feet when you do that, you should see that the tendons separate and the foot looks smooth on the top, right? Instead of looking, um, like uh, with me, I have skinny feet and I can see all my tendons, but when I put this ball underneath, and spread my toes, everything goes smooth on top, right? So I'm really grabbing with my whole foot, and I can feel activation all along the foot here as I do this. So this one is the one that's hard to do with not a round cylinder or a ball. This one is the one, the toe squeezing you could do with just a towel or um, anything really without anything. So I tell people to practice toe curling anyway, but then this is the one that um, I really love. Great. And so then if we connect the feet, so I feel like the feet and the glute medius are the same. They need to work together in order to have an arch in your foot. And why we're so concerned about the arch in the foot is because we're concerned about the whole alignment of the foot, knee, hip complex going upward. So let me take you up to standing. 
And like Genevieve was saying, and, and um, I think I mentioned too, is you can do all of these on, in standing, right? So my total lift and spread I can do in standing. I can do my pulling my – trying to then progress to pulling the ball of the big toe back towards the heel in standing. I can do the toe drumming in standing. I can do it backwards drumming in standing, <laughs> Right, and um, Genevieve mentioned calf raises, which I'll show you in a minute as well. I do love calf raises for feet as well, but it is very linear. Um, but then the, the thing about the hip arch also is that if I'm flat or if I'm weak or internally rotated or my knees are dropping in, any of those reasons, so feet, knees, or hips can drive the feet flat. Right. Once we drive the feet flat, we've pancaked and we've lost all the strength and all the muscles. And I've actually lost musculature going upward. So I like to think about the foot as sort of our gateway into proper posture. And so I, one of my favorite things to do is take a TheraBand and put it down on the floor. And I'm going to uh, put it sort of to the middle of my body. Sorry. And so I'm going to step on it, the arch of my foot. So it's in going in the middle of my body. So from out of the foot to inside. Just one foot on the arch. Right. And then you want to leave the end of the band on the floor on the outside. So you're not touching the band on the outside. Right. And then you're going to take your band. And this is a really long one. I didn't need such a long one. But you're going to lit, pull up on that arch with your band and wrap it around your lower leg. Then wrap it in between your legs, and then you're going to bring it around your butt. So I'm going to take it around my backside and hold it in my left hand. So right foot is in, band ends up in the left. And then where I want, if you want to adjust, you're not sure what you're feeling, the place that I want to feel tension is on that arch, so I can pull up the band there. The other place I want to feel the tension is across my butt. So it's kind of nice to try and open up the band as it crosses your butt back here and then pull it out to the side here. Right. So I should have probably turned. Let me see if I can turn myself so you can see the green band on my blue pants here. Right. So there it is kind of across my butt too. Right. So glute medius is who I'm after in the butt area. But if I then go to stand on this leg, I can just take the other leg out of the way. And what I'm trying to feel is if I take my hip into rotation underneath me, activate glute medius, squeeze that hip in, right? I can also feel that my arch is picking up at the same time. So I could start that at glute medius. I'm going to relax now, and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to pull here a little bit. Started at glute medius, squeeze that hip underneath me so I'm right aligned in that leg, and now I can feel that arch wanting to pick up, keep that ball of the big toe down, and then relax. So that's starting it from glute medius, this wrapping feeling, and we're helping the arch know what to do by having this band around it. I could also start it from the arch of my foot, so I can start by pulling that arch in, coming in and wrapping upward, and so picking up that leg, I'm really in a beautiful place here in my stance and alignment. So it's just cueing that arch up and that connection between the glute knee and the arch. Yeah. So I love using this. The, the exercise we also have that does this is the chair, the cross. Uh, if you're on the chair standing leg lowers, but the cross. So I'd be pushing the foot bar down here. But you can mimic that because that puts you in that rotation with the hip lift and really gets this leg super aligned straight in front because I have to get to the bar over here. You guys all know which one I'm talking about, right? That standing leg lower cross-legged. One of my favorite exercises because we have to have that wrap around. Otherwise, this thigh hits the or the lower leg hits the bar as it goes up and down, right? So let's try the other side. If you take that band out and then you place it on the floor, I'm going to step on it and it's going to be on the inside. Then I'm going to pull on the arch as I go around, wrap it, and wrap it again. And then I'm going to wrap it around my bottom, my hip, and outside. Right. 
Right. So here again, I can start this with um, my glute, which is really actually probably where I go most often. So I'm going to pull on this band a little bit, let it pull me into a little rotation so that I'm up on this leg, right? And I've got this leg right underneath me. And it's wanting me to rotate, but I'm resisting a bit. The arch is going to pick up the ball of the toe is on the floor there. Right. So holding that. And I should feel really stable, right? I can release and come back to it. Pull. So it's almost like I'm squeezing this glute in to pick up my arch. And release and pull. And then this again, if I kept going, this would be that exercise, the standing leg lower over here with the foot, bar, foot on the bar of the chair, or even sometimes I tell people to just practice doing this at home, going out and into this position, spreading those toes on the floor, down and up with this leg, right? Across the body to get that feeling. So I feel work all through the arch, outside and into that glute medius, following that wrap. So that's one of my favorite to connect the foot to the rest of the body again. All right, and then um, any questions about that one? Yeah, okay. So then the calf raises is another one. So I like to do, um, I like to teach it with a ball between the heels um, because I feel like people's ankles track all over the place and I wanna make sure they don't track incorrectly. And then I want to get the feet right under my knees. So my knees are pretty much together. And I'm giving pressure on that ball with my heels to keep my feet parallel. And I'm separating my toes and widening them there. And then I'm going to go just up and down. You could do this also with your heels all the way together and down. So this keeps my ankles in line keeps everything aligned, keeps my body, and then I can find that lift and lower. So it's such a great exercise for feet, especially when you control both sides of the motion, which I know all of you would do, but not necessarily all of your clients would do, right? <laughs> so nice and controlled. And then once you have, once you know that you have that right, then progress, only then progressing to single foot. So going to single foot, I want to keep this nice tracking alignment that I had and still woo, try and go um, up and down at that slower pace. So initially even just holding on or when you're talking a lot, hold on to something or keep just the tippy toe down on the floor to give you some stability. But just really watching that tracking doesn't go crazy. So the tracking problems that we see a lot of the times are, I, I go, I call it ankles going on an excursion, but they end up going lateral. Right, and not tracking in that straight line. So switch feet if you haven't, going up and down. Spread those toes on the floor. Up and down. Woo. Yeah, I'm getting a burn all the way up into my butt now. <laughs> Actually, we just had a glute class earlier today too, so. All right, so those are the main ones in stand. Oh, there's sorry, one more taking one of the other ones I had earlier also into standing. I lost one of my balls, but you grab your little balls. Oh, there it is. Again, or you could do this on like a rolled up towel as well. And you're gonna put, you're gonna actually put it under your feet and stand over it. And so the idea is that I'm spreading the, again, across those metatarsals. So I'm creating space between the metatarsals, right, and holding that there. And now I can work on from here, gripping, um, I'm trying to squeeze. I'm trying not, not necessarily to squeeze my toes. I'm trying to squeeze lower down in the middle of my foot. So trying to squeeze my arch in. So my toes go down, but I'm trying to squeeze the arch towards the heel again. Similar to what we would do after that toe lift, right, to shorten the arch is really what I'm after here. You can encourage it by squeezing the toes or by just pulling back. And then you could even take them further under, which is just nice for your arches to hang out here for a little bit, just sitting on these balls and taking weight um, is nice on the arches there. And then you could spread the toes 
and just roll off into a bit of a calf raise here. So this is just more of a feel good at the bottom of the feet. But again, spreading. The whole idea of spreading out the dorsal foot or the bottom of the foot or just spread the foot, I think really helps people feel better over time. So what happens, like Genevieve was saying, is the toes and feet get so squashed, we want to spread out um, and give the feet some space, the toes some space. Right. And then one of the mind-boggling hard foot exercises that I don't teach people very often because I can't do it very well myself, I'm very embarrassed about it, is um, the, so your big toes have an abductor muscle that's all their own, right? They have, so technically we should be able to move our big toes towards the midline, right? Did you guys know that? Um, my toes don't like to do that, but it, there is a muscle there. And so it's fun to challenge it and it's easiest seated. So um, I brought this box in just in case, but I'm gonna just throw it here. And so you can do it seated on the floor, but it's a little easier seated in a chair because you can actually see what you're doing. But here, um, the easiest way to get access to that toe, ab can any of you do that really easily? Just ab move your toe out, Genevieve can do it. We should look at her. Yes, look at Genevieve. She's doing a good job. So basically, it's easiest to do it if you can pick up your toes. I find it's easier, and then I can work. So my right big toe does a little better job than the rest of my toes. Um, but I just pick up my toes, and I work to try and open it towards the middle. Right? Even if you're not getting that motion, trying to get that motion is a really good thing. So it's activating the muscles, and it's the same idea of spreading. You could, you could use all the toes spreading to help you try and get that. You're probably getting some of it. Or you can try it in isolation, trying to just open that big toe. And this is what Genevieve had mentioned also, that this is a really great exercise to try and prevent bunions, right? So keeping the muscle strong on this medial side of your foot to try and get that big toe pulling towards midline. So this is kind of a mind teaser, body retraining um, for the toes. Um, yes. So I think if I was talking feet, feet, those would be the main ones like home program wise I would do plus the TheraBand that Genevieve had. Um, I love those TheraBand exercises. And then my other favorites on our footwork on the foot bar, but using all the different ranges of toes on, metatarsals across for monkey and heels on to get all the different strength points. I don't do any footwork on arches and that is classically in some of the repertoires you'll see there are work, there is work on arches of feet. I feel like there's no reason to put the foot bar in the arch of the foot because it's really hard to activate any kind of musculature and create support, it feels to me. And I have flatter feet. My feet want to flatten all the time. So I feel like it just pancakes my foot and I can't get to the muscles. So I prefer to be up here kind of at the mesh. Now I can get some work and push out and I'm actually working that foot um, here or tippy toes for like calf raises or heels. That way I'm working the toes back in my heels and the and tibias anterior, at least in the dorsal foot. Yeah, going back. So those are the main things that I um, use for the feet along with that glute medius connection. Do you guys have any questions on those? Or anything to add? I know a lot of times we talk, we also do that heel. I, I've been experimenting a little bit with it with the TheraBand. Um, and it works best seated, you know? So like, if I could find the chair. <laughs> Placing the band under your heel and creating just a little bit of tension there. And then lowering the heel down toward the floor and sort of actively um, elongating the calf and the Achilles, uh, sort of that eccentric work and being really cautious not to use your thigh to get it down. Like, and you'll notice that your quad will wanna pop out if that's what's happening. Um, and so instead just trying to soften the thigh and work that elongation through the heel. Okay. That's yeah. it. 
Okay, yeah. And th- we do that with the ball, too. Um, and is that getting just at the dorsiflexors? What's the point of that one? To actually, um, I think it helps activate the arch a little bit. So that shortening feeling. So most people just go like this and they end up pushing down. And now I'm doing it all with my thigh. But if you work to press down through the foot, you're really, I think, shortening here under the foot. It's that same, it's a feeling of like pulling back. I get with the ball. With the band, I almost wish that the band could be this way a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because then I feel like I could find it in the foot. I don't know if you agree, Genevieve, but but, uh, I feel like if I could get it this way, then I could find similar um, feeling. Whereas up and down, If you're trained, I think you can do it right. So I have no doubt that you're doing it right, but I think people who are not as trained would just do the pumping down with the leg and not really notice. I don't know what you think. Probably, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so almost pulling it this way might give it a little bit more. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think those are the main. The other thing that really plays a a part in – the foot. I'm going to keep talking. I can keep talking. I said I could. So you can stop me anytime if you guys have something else to add. So just interrupt. But so the other piece, I talked a lot about the outer because that's where I go first to align the feet and the hip. And um, the knees should follow that. But a lot, if, the, if you see that the primary issue is knee related, most of the time I find that it's um, tight IT and weak inner thigh. But I've also been experimenting a lot with aligning feet using a ball and standing. So if you take a ball, oops, too much stuff, sorry. If you take a ball and place it up high in the inner thighs, so I'm going to take it quite a ways up here. And then um, I can, I want to bring my feet in pretty narrow, as narrow as I feel like I can do that. And then while I'm here, I'm going to already open my toes and spread them out on the floor. So open them, lift them. I lift and open, and then I try and set them down there. And then as I set them down, I'm going to connect to my inner thigh. So I'm going to press that ball in really snug and keep my toes spreading open as I go. So I'm almost feeling like Uh, My heels would, if I didn't hold them, they would want to pull themselves together. If I was on a slippery thing, you'd see them pull together. But I'm going to start that with the inner thigh, spreading toes, and then squeeze. And I can get that um, connection here, connection in. And then you could relax the toes, but it's just such a nice lift. And then release. So I'm going to go a little narrower, and then I'm going to pick up those toes the arches and I'm going to wrap it's that inner thigh squeeze wrap and release so everything's activating it's in that same direction as the band but now I've got both working together as those inner thighs are kicking in so getting that all to lift and release are you externally rotating when you do that squeeze and when you squeeze are your are you externally rotating? I'm not but I am Mm -hmm. I am but I'm not so that's the action. So the only, I'm, the floor is holding me here. My, my work is I feel most of the pressure in the balls of my big toes, the metatarsal balls. And then I feel a lot of work happening as I wrap an inner thigh, but I'm not actually going there. Yeah. Cause I'm, and then what happens is that energy translates into my arches and picks up the arch of the foot. Yeah. So if I was on a slippery floor, this would happen, but I'm not. I'm sticking to the floor and on purpose sticking there. And then I want to get that all going. So then I can get up on this leg. And what I've been doing then is having you take one leg off and stay on the one. Because really we want you to be able to walk, right? And walking is one-legged. And then you could just pulse this leg in. Yeah. Right, and then try the other side. So set it up so you've got that connection. 
and I've got that lift in the arch and I've got this pulled in and now I can come in. Right, and then relax. Questions? Yeah, so I'm like, even though I know this has to do with feet, it really feels like because it travels all the way up into the hips and gets all those like nice little inside muscles on the inner thigh. And I'm thinking of like all my peoples that got all the things. So it's like, it's not just feet because everything starts with the feet and travels up. Exactly. Yeah. So it really, you, I don't think you can fix the feet if everything else is wrong. But it's a good, like the little exercises in the feet. So I'm obsessed with the fact that we actually have four layers of muscles in the bottom of your feet. So why did God give us four layers of muscles in the bottom of our feet so we could just not use them? So, and then let our feet flatten out and everything else, you know? So those layers under the feet, I, I think we can get to a lot of them and we can do a lot of strengthening. Um, and so those little ones are getting those intrinsics, the toe curling, um, the arches, and then um, the heel pressing, the toe spreading, the abduction, those are all getting those little muscles inside the foot. But, but really the purpose of having a good, well-aligned foot is so that we track well up above that foot. Right? Without the foot, we don't track well. And without tracking well, our feet are going to be wrong. So they really connect. And that glute medius connection is the one that I feel like is the most significant in that. If, if, and you can see that here. I'll show you my, my weaker foot. If I, if I hip check, hip check, right, where a lot of people are a lot of the time, whether walking, they end up running and in, in lowering the hip. My foot, no matter how much I want to try, this foot of mine, the arch lowers. Right, so I, from the side, it hears me lifted, right? I've got an arch, yay! But then if I hip check, it lowers. And mine's pretty significant because I can, I'm flex, too flexible in there and I pancake, right? But that's not a huge hip check, right? It's not huge. If I was standing like this, most people wouldn't say anything. It doesn't look huge. But if I ran like this for 12 miles, I'm done. Like my, something's gonna hurt, knee, hip, foot, something. So I've got to learn to be able to wrap that, pick up the arch and get this hip underneath me. Right, so not only weakness in the foot, but weakness in my hip or glute medius is going to cause a huge issue for me over time, probably. So whether I'm, if I'm a runner, I'm going to get there faster because I'm going to be dropping and causing issue really quickly with a lot of impact. If I'm a hiker or a walker, probably over time, It'll take longer, I'll get there, right? But I'll still get to that same pain point because I'm not mechanically correct and my foot's dropping. So one, one thing that we do is always controversial is do we put an insole in somebody's shoe for this reason? And, and, and I go back and forth. I want people to strengthen their feet, but I also don't want to mess up the upper chain. Or if I'm trying to fix the upper chain, sometimes I'll support the foot. So I don't have to worry about everything at once, right? So put an insole in the foot, fix the alignment at the hip, get enough strength up here, and then start taking that away as I strengthen the foot. So glute alignment and arch alignment for me are like totally connected. You have to have both. You can't have one without the other really. Does anybody have anything else they want to add? No, okay. Well, I didn't have anything to add. I had something to ask. Those eversion and inversion things you always had us have clients do with the TheraBand. So the eversion I really like too for the, with a the TheraBand to strengthen the lateral foot and the lateral leg. And I don't know if I'm right or wrong about this, but I don't do a lot of the inversion work anymore because I feel like that's the way that we hurt ourselves a lot of the time. So this one in particular, so these are the ones Kim's talking about, are the two feet, right? And then I'm going out with the ankle and back so going out genevieve sort of covered this in her ankle circles you could do genevieve's ankle circle or you could do it this boring physical therapy way oh. so this and but i've gone away from as much of the inversion which is this let's see if you can see it here right and then pushing inward and i don't know if that's right or wrong probably good to do anyway but i always feel like this is the way people sprain their ankle. So I don't know if we need to strengthen that way or as much the opposite way. But yeah, this would be the inversion. 
of that, right? Really ro rolling, going in and controlling your way back. So it's probably good eccentric work for the peroneals, but, um, but yeah, those two are there. But Genevieve did the ankle circles. So the, I think her ankle circles uh, cover that as well because you're going in all the directions, right? In the control mm -hmm. roll. So you They're can- simpler. <laughs> simpler for me. The rolling like ankle? Yeah. I, yeah. Like I think it is important to have the E version. I think people should be able to do that well, going out to the side here, right? To get the peroneal muscles really strong is key, mm -hmm. uh, I think, for the ankle more than foot itself. Yes. Great. Does anyone have a specific topic they're so excited to get to next week? No, but I wanted to um, comment on Genevieve's webbing in the webbing. Yes. I it woke up parts of my foot I didn't even know were yeah. asleep. And that was really intense. So thank you. All right. So I get to pick the topics for next week. Let's do hips. Sure. Hips. All right. Hips it is. I love it. Thank you. Opening that. Let's go right up to that hip and open up that can of worms. All right. That sounds great. So yeah, hips for next week. And uh, like I said, contribute, watch, participate, whatever you want to do. All right, you guys have a great rest of the week.